Back again. <laughs> I think I'll keep my mask on down here. Yo. 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 Welcome to the Crettor of London. Fuck. Outside the blind beggar, which is open. Come on. Can I come in? What do you think? Um, oh, can you hear me alright? Um, can you just come in? We're signing. Can I sign in? Yeah, I can't stand out here. Can you show me the video? Um, yeah, am I allowed? Yeah, I did a tour. I did a tour. Oh! Right. You weren't open when I done it. Now I'm doing part two. And you're open. Alright, that makes sense. Yeah. Where's the bullet? It's in the wall somewhere. It right? is in the back. Okay. Let's see by the fire, please. And where was the guy standing? Where you shot him? Alright, so. Show me, round. <laughs> oh, perfect. She's doing it already. Oh, wow. Well, so don't talk to her. <laughs> he asked where the bullet was. <laughs> I'm just doing a little tour right now. Can I join? Do you yeah. mind? No, you can. Are you alright with the camera? Yeah, form with it. Brilliant. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, so basically, um, I was just saying that Georgie Cornell had been in prison. Ronnie had looked after him quite a lot while he'd been in prison. And um, basically, uh, after Georgie Cornell came out, he very quickly went and joined the Richardson's gang, which is based in South London, um, which is a rival gang to the Crays, who were obviously um, in East London. And George Cornell was from East London, so a lot of people didn't like him because he'd done that. Um, and he'd kind of gone against the Crays, even though they helped him quite a lot while he'd been in prison. And um, he'd been in the hospital one day, George Cornell, I don't know what he was doing over there, but he'd come in here for a drink afterwards and obviously this pub, um, the craze didn't actually drink here that much, but they they obviously had kind of like the run of the place, this was their territory and everybody knew it. Yeah. And so um, George Cornell's car was parked outside and it was, I can't remember the exact make, but it was a very distinguishable car, baby blue and colour. Um, and somebody obviously got in contact with Roddy Cray and told him, you know, George Cornell was at the Blind Beggar and um, Ronnie came in, they exchanged a few words um, and after losing his temper, obviously everyone knows Ronnie had a bit of a temper. Um, Say the shot, least. Yeah, <laughs> he shot um, two <laughs> bullets into the ceiling um, and there's one, we've just uncovered it recently, that one. Um, wow. Yeah, really yeah. I'm not really sure the other one was or if it's been covered up or whatever, but okay, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, shot two into the ceiling to make everyone be quiet, basically. Um, and they were quiet, believe me. Um, and I think that the conversation between them escalated, and um, Ronnie, who was with his friend at the time, Richard wasn't here, um, ended up shooting George Cornell, I believe, three times in the head. And he was sitting just here at the end of the bar, in a saloon bar. Um, it was a bit different at the time because um, it was an all around bar, and the entrance to the pub was through the gentleman's toilet here. So where this door is, that's where um, Ronnie would have come in from um, and seen George Cornell just here at the end of the bar. He then shot him three times, like I said, and we've got one sort of added frames in the wall here with the original wallpaper. Wow. Um, obviously, it's uh, decaying a little bit there, it's been there yeah. for a while. Of yeah, yeah. Um, of course. Yeah, and after, um, after he shot him in the head, obviously, uh, he hit Ronnie and his friend left pretty much straight away. They told everyone, you know, he didn't see anything here today. If he did, then. Be your wife and children next to you, that kind of thing. You just yeah. you know, love to fret. Um, so he left with his friend, and um, obviously everyone was a bit like shaken up. But um, three of the, I think there were a few people that were in the pub drinking at the time um, that put uh, George Cornell's body on a carpet, um, just probably where he's right where he's standing, put his body on a carpet. Um, and dragged his body, shot in the head three times, um, to the Royal London Hospital, which is across the road. From what the, uh, so from what the lady said, I rolled him up on a bit of carpet, dragged him all the way over here. Okay. Up to all the way over there. Um, literally across this main road, a busy main road, loads of people, and no one said anything oh. because they knew exactly what was going on probably. And, <laughs> you know, you didn't want to get involved, it's much better to stay out of it. Uh, yeah. it's up to me, I'll definitely stay out of it. Yeah. And, um, so they, they drag his body across the road to the Royal London Hospital, um, where George Cornell is then transferred to a hospital in West London and then pronounced dead um, in West London. So there is a lot of um, kind of conspiracy whether he actually died in this pub or not, whether he was 
whether he was still alive when they dragged his body across the road, but yeah, back course. in the day, obviously, things were not as um, uh, clear as they are today. You know, about so cameras and things like that, right? Yeah. Like that, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it then took, uh, basically, the police came in, interviewed everyone, and everyone went, I've got no idea what you're talking about, mate. I, wasn't, I didn't see anything. I thought I saw someone on the ground, but I thought they were just drunk, you know, da 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 da. Like, yeah. People are just coming up with these stories, and I didn't know, I didn't see anything. Um, until two years later, when the police finally got through to the barmaid, um, who then uh, confessed about what had happened at the time, uh, which put the, put the brothers away um, for the rest of his life, anyway. Um, Amazing. So yeah, uh, that, that's the story of George and Cornell and the Blind Mega. Brilliant, thank you <laughs> yeah, very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Not really to take pictures or anything. Um, thank you very much. Unfortunately, obviously the bar's changed quite a lot since back in the day, but we've tried to keep it somewhat. Um, yeah, we should not. Cool. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, What's the, the original bullet hole. Um, from the thing, sort of original wallpaper. It's crazy, I walked straight in and my camera is right in the spot where George Cornell was shot in and Ronnie walked through. That door, no that's the toilet. <laughs> that's not the door you walked through. <laughs> it can't be. Alright, well that wasn't the door you walked through but it was somewhere around there anyway. So, yeah, fascinating. Really not a lot of time here, isn't it? Right, so that was cool, wasn't it? Not only was it open, we got a little tour and a little explanation and all. <laughs> they always said if I fell into a viper's bit, I'll come up wearing snakeskin shoes. So, on to the next one. Just casually uh, stroll forward the local council estate, Sam, isn't it? Only got attacked last time. <sighs> Two more than that, son. And just the Regent's Canal. All the way down the high street, it's a little bit of a bop from the blind beggar. But we're off to our next destination, Eric Street. A little walk through Mylan Park. I don't think I'm in the best part of uh, town. I've just been told not to put my camera on, so obviously I'll put my camera on. But um, yeah, I think we just arrived at Eric Street. Right, next up on the tour, we've just arrived in Eric Street in E3. Um, we stand outside Cooper's Court, which is nothing but a peaceful old people's home. But back in the 50s, this was a billiards club called the Regal. Um, at age 20, the brothers acquired this in 1954. And for a few years, it was a pretty successful billiards club. Which is right outside, because you'll probably need a pint after that walk. The Wentworth Arms, nice little pretty pub. What? Now the Regal Club. Well, the Regal Club, before the craze acquired it, um, was a meeting place for local gangs and local criminals. Insurance companies wouldn't really insure it, um, you know, and it didn't have a very good reputation. The craze took it over and then, yeah, it was pretty successful for a few years. Fascinating bit of history. Right, so I've just bought 25 minutes. Now, you're probably gonna think, why have you just bought 25 minutes to show me a car enterprise? <laughs> so yeah, in the rain, I have just bought you to an enterprise. But, this wasn't just an enterprise, you've got to look a little bit deeper, deeper, deeper. This was once a nightclub, the Double R Club, which was named after the Cray Brothers. Um, they acquired it in the late 1950s when Ronnie Cray was in prison uh, for assault. A few years later, 1957, Reggie Cray acquires the Double R Club um, with his brother Charlie Cray. And um, it was known as a place that the East End people could enjoy the West End, but in the East End. Yeah, so there was, uh, there was live music, a jukebox, there was a pool table, there was a boxing ring upstairs. They had many celebrities here like Jackie Collins and Barbara Windsor. It was known that after Ronnie Cray was released from prison for assault that he brought some dwarves and a donkey here and it really dwindled down the business. Typical Ronnie really. Yeah. The club is situated in 145 Bow Road. Cat Terrace. 
Don't lose love. Pouring in the rain, eh? Right, we're all quiet then. I felt like everyone that I liked was, uh, was watching me. But, um, it might be that one, might be that corner, or here was a pub called the Black Swan. And Albert Donahue, who frequented the pub, um, who was a guy that was shot by, by Reggie Cray, um, told the police that he was, um, he was in the Black Swan instead of saying he was in the Albert Road pub, the Crown and Anchor, um, where he actually was getting shot by, by Reggie Cray. So I'm just heading up to the, uh, the next destination. Um, not gonna lie, it's a little bit shoddy around here. But, um, but yeah. Right, next destination is Wilton Music Hall. So yeah, around the back streets. Again, council houses. <laughs> right, so we've just arrived outside Wilton Music Hall. And there's a wedding going on at the minute, so I've got to be a bit careful. But, um, it's good, it looks nice, I'll show you one. So we're outside Wilton Music Hall. Um, it wasn't actually a uh, place that the Crays frequently visited, although they did sometimes for music. Um, it was actually a scene where they shot the uh, 1990 film with the uh, two brothers, what's their name? Martin and Gary Kemp. That's it, yeah. But it's when they start to go into legal enterprises as part of the film. I'm not going to clip all the film in and all that, but yeah. And also, I can't go in there because it's a wedding. Um, but it does look really good in there. It's worth a come round. So. That brings us to the end of the Craze Tour of London. Part two. Um, I hope you've liked the tour. You seem to like the first one, so have a look at my number two. All right, and um, if you want all the information for all of my tours, all of my trips out, go to sandversusworld.com. If you like any of the t-shirts worn or any of the clothes, go to outthecircle.com.